It is an honor to be here and have you watch us and let's let you see what the Lord is doing in, in the world today. Today I have an amazing woman with me. Um, the Living in Peace of is actually into place because of my interaction with people. And based on my interaction with individuals in the project, I see the mark of Jesus in them. They actually left a good impression on me. And so today I have with me Nancy, who is, in my opinion, and based on my interaction with her, a living epistle. Ooh. Hi, Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? Hi. I'm blessed. You're blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Great. So today I have a lot of questions for you. Yes. And, and I know your testimony will be blessing people. Uh, a push with this is if one soul is touched, it is done. The job is done. Okay, so That's what I think is. people would want to know. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> Are you guys ready? <laughs> people would want to know who Nancy is. Well, Nancy is a child of God, a woman who loves the Lord, who is a flawed individual, extremely flawed, but through his grace and mercy and his love, he keeps me. He watches over me. As they say, he weeps over me and shields and protects me. That's great. That's great. That is a great, um, that is a good way to identify yourself. So, I have another question. You know, I have my cue cards here, right? I have full of questions. Okay. Um, okay, so we know, you and I both know that Jesus is the Son of God and he is, it is only through him salvation can be had. That's right. That's the only way. Right, right. There's no other question. There's no one that you need to go through, no one you need to pray to or have to see for you. Yeah. Jesus is all. So, with that said, mm -hmm. who would you say Jesus is to you? Jesus to me is my father, my brother, my mom, my brothers and sisters, my friend, my confidant, my savior, my love, my everything. I love you. Everything. He's my everything. <laughs> he is. <laughs> For me, he's, he's the coolest person I know. Uh, I think he's, the, he listen, he's the most faithful, even when we are faithless. Right. He's a constant. He's a constant. He'll never leave you, never forsake you. So Nancy, we know that Jesus is everything to you. Um, we know a little bit about Nancy too, because you gave us a, some description. But do you mind sharing your background so that people can actually know where you're coming from and what you do for a living? And Sure. I am the daughter of Haitian, I guess, the immigrants that came over. My mom and dad um, was born here, oldest of six children. Um, and I am currently working as a licensed practical nurse in a nursing home. Um, I have 40 patients. Wow. How is that responsible? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's challenging, but I need to go back. I didn't, I didn't want to be a nurse. I figured that they worked too hard. <laughs> my mom, and I listened to my mom. I would have been a nurse many years ago. Oh. And whenever I don't listen to my mom, I tend to go to the So mothers nursing. really do know best? Everything. <laughs> oh, wow. Not know better, but I said, mom, mine, yes. Oh, wow. Because when you have a parent that's led by God and mm. seeks God, and praise, nothing beats that. Mm -hmm. And they will never steer you wrong. Now, nursing, I had to come to um, the kicking and screaming, but last year, last year, beginning of last year, is when I realized that the Lord placed me there, 
especially for those that are there long term, at the end of their lives, mm. to be a light and to touch them and those that don't know Christ, that through my actions, the way I interact with them, lead them to the Lord wow. at the end. So, so it it's really becomes a ministry. It's a ministry. It's a ministry. And I realize that I say yes. One of the things that I love about God is that he has people everywhere. Um, you have the lawyers, you have the nurse, you have the doctors, you have the mothers who are stay-at-home mother. And I think God strategically placed people in, in certain area to collect those he's drawing to him. And the Lord doesn't need us, but he chooses to partner with us. And I love the fact that he puts you in the nursing field and you get to interact with people who are the worst women of their life. Need and Jesus. Need they need yes. a reminder of Jesus. Absolutely. They need to see the face of Jesus. Absolutely. And which is why even this project, you were living in peace for <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So I know you're a Christian. I know you have accepted the Lord as your Lord, Lord and yes. Savior. Do you can you tell us how that experience came about? How did you meet Jesus? Well, um I like many others, were fortunate, I said, to be born into a family of Christians. Grandparents, mom, dad, aunts, uncles, and was raised in the church. Fortunately, um, I was serving the Lord very young and very active in the church. But what I would say was also, I won't say that it was a bad thing, but we tend to take a lot for granted. Um, we're shielded from so much through, you know, the prayers. Um, we're sheltered from a lot of things, and we just take it for granted that, you know, we haven't done certain things, etc. So then we tend to get drawn away. So you start to do things by routine, okay? You know, you're in Sunday school, you're doing this, you're doing that by routine, and not really understanding and getting the, the um, understanding, you know, who Christ is and what Jesus is to you. So it's as we get older, um, I won't say that you really question, but then you see what others are doing and you see that, you know, you're wondering, well, why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? Mm -hmm. And you tend to get, as the word says, you get drawn away by your own lust and then you end up in a situation where your back is up against the wall and your friend can't do it, your mom can't do it, they can't do it, and Jesus is the only one that you can go on because he's the only one that can answer. And I think it's like you talk about how the Bible says, you raise a child in the way they should go and they will not depart, even when they kind of want to sway yeah, away. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but the Lord will draw them back to Always, him. always, always. And what I found is that... Um, I had a career, I was serving the Lord, loved the Lord, but where for me, the adversary was able to um, find that need is the fact that you want to be loved, mm -hmm. you want to be in a relationship, mm -hmm. you your friends, etc., in relationships, and that's how, you know, um, ended up getting into a relationship that wasn't the Lord's will for me. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, um, with not listening to my mom um, and a lot of my family or respected individuals that, you know, loved me, I went and married the individual, mm -hmm. which wasn't the Lord's will for me. Okay. Um, but thank God, even though it wasn't the Lord's will for me, He kept me, even through my darkest, darkest, darkest days, crying, depression, just withdrawing from everyone. He kept me mm. and didn't allow the adversary to take me okay. and have victory over me. But what I would pray in my times of um, need and crying is, Lord God, guard my heart, my soul, and my mind mm -hmm. so that I won't forget you and I won't lose my grip. <laughs> <laughs> and that he did. He did. That he did. Great. He did. God is amazing. So, oh, he's awesome. <laughs> he's awesome. <laughs> that is. 
And, you know, for me, the reason I chose to follow Jesus is because as a young child and even as an adult, as a teenager, life did not seem to make sense if you take Jesus out of the equation for me. Mm-hmm. And I'm not usually impressed by a lot of things. I'm not impressed by people that much. I'm impressed by people who love the Lord, though. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, Jesus, the reason I choose to follow Jesus, I, I mean, I've experienced a lot of things. I've experienced, you know, careers, you know, yeah. things that the world would say, mm-hmm. you got it. It doesn't satisfy for me. Jesus make life. Makes sense. Um, that's the reason I chose to follow Jesus. I'm curious to know the reason you saying Jesus is it for me. I had an amazing role model. My my hero is my mom. An amazing woman of prayer and faith through everything. You know, um, like I said, there were six of us and there were times with growing up where she was on her own doing it. And it wasn't a thing of complaining to mothers, etc. She would get on her knees and hours and hours always has a tune on her heart, always singing, always had, you know, always encouraging us to love the Lord and serve the Lord and says, the Lord is going to take care of it. I'm trusting the Lord. He's going to provide. And to see him do that time and time again. Six children. Providing. Hmm. Through his blessing. Providence. Blessing. God is that's amazing. I'm in awe. I was having a conversation with my mom a few months ago about just in awe to see that the Lord gave her six children that were healthy, thank God. No problems where she was going back and forth to the hospital with them. And just kept up. So now she's enjoying. Enjoying to see that, you know, we're all serving the Lord. Not perfect. <laughs> not perfect. You're not perfect? No. <laughs> not perfect. Not perfect, but to see that they all accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and we're serving Him. So you so see that think. because you see that's that He's true. real, His Word is that's right. Is real, is realistic. That's why you were saying it. Exactly. I, I saw it, lived it with my mom. Okay. That's and you know, family, see that. So. It's great. Oh, hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, you know, the Bible speak about how we have this, the Holy Spirit give different gifts, different ministries, and I honestly believe that everyone has a gift has a message, has something to do, because we are the hand of God. Mm-hmm. Um, what is your spiritual gift, and and what ministries are you using them? I believe that I have more I have more than one okay. spiritual gift. And the Lord, he, does have, <laughs> he, gives, he, gives, he gives a lot to one. I have a more than one spiritual gift. Um, Gift of encouragement, prayer, just loving individuals, but then also um, through song, being able to sing and and give him praise in that in that manner, which I think is also a gift. So, are you involved in any ministry at your local church? I am. Well, I know you sing, but I think people would want to (laughs) know. Yes, I I sing it in my church. Oh, in the choir. Yes. Beautiful. So you get to encourage. Oh Watch it. It's it's humbling. Mm-hmm. It's amazing, and the group of people that for me to be with individuals that love the Lord, praising and worshiping. Mm-hmm. Of course, sessions are mostly praise and worship <laughs> sessions, yeah. and that for me not always having that. To have any, you know, people that just as they speak to you, they're encouraging and speaking life into you on a constant basis. That for me is everything you need. Mm-hmm. And I remember praying and asking the Lord to surround me with individuals that love Him, and he did. that will lead me towards Him, and, he and that He did. That He did. That he did. It seemed like <laughs> the Lord. You, you keep talking to the Lord, and the Lord keep providing. 
the answer is because he, he treats you like he's bright. <laughs> you know, you're <laughs> bright. Well, the way I the way I speak about it, I would think that you know I'm the most important. <laughs> you know, he doesn't have time for anybody else, right. but each and every one of us once you set that time aside for him where I myself to a lack at times where set that time time aside to pray to read our Bibles and to just get into communion with him he'll answer you have to give him an opportunity to guide you and direct you the only times that I have gone astray mm -hmm. And gotten myself in trouble is when I've gone on my own, mm -hmm. where I haven't seeked his counsel, or I've just completely ignored. Mm -hmm. um, looking back, I remember going to different church services, you know, if my choir was going to sing somewhere, or we're going to minister somewhere, or even in local church, visiting pastors coming and say, wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord. That was a continuous, especially when I was considering marrying my husband, my mm -hmm. ex-husband. Wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord. And I just ignored it. Mm. I just ignored it. And you know, you're stubborn and you just went, I'm going to just do your own thing. Okay, so this is the time <laughs> for me to ask you this question. Um, the Bible indicates that as Christians, we are going to go through trials <laughs> and hardship. Mm -hmm. Do you mind sharing one trying moment in your life where the Lord what you threw it? Well, that would be the same. <laughs> that would be the same. Because at the time, you, said the you feel betrayed. I'm sorry, with uh, this whole situation with um, marrying someone that wasn't the Lord's choice, mm -hmm. unequally yoked. Mm -hmm. And it was, con it was a complete and utter mess someone that you've gone against, everyone that you, you that loves you and that you trust, thinking that this person is going to be with you by your side till death do you part. And then you come to the realization that, hold on, now I'm stuck in a situation where, oh my God, if I don't have the Lord's help or someone to help me, I will die. And it wreaks havoc with your mind. Um, I was completely depressed, crying all the time. I would go to work. I don't know. God is faithful. God is faithful. But I remember just asking him, because I, I lived not too far from a um, hospital, and I said, Lord God, just please don't let me die here. Mm -hmm. Just don't. It wasn't physical abuse. It was mental, emotional, and um, verbal. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time, and also neglect, mm -hmm. just someone just there ignoring you. But what I've come to realize is that it's not the individual, because I'll tell you, a good individual just wasn't good to me. But remember that the adversary will work through yeah. anyone to hurt you. I think the Bible says all oh, that <laughs> is not against. Principalities, but principalities, exactly, right. and that's what. So, where we tend to um, go astray is where we start to hate and have issues with the individual. When you realize it's not the individual you have an issue with, mm -hmm. it's the adversary that's trying to kill you, right. and it's using that individual right. to depress you. And that for me was the the worst time. But still, still. God is always there. He's always there. And how did you get out? How did you get out? <laughs> how did you get out? Like I said, the Lord provided a mama for me. Okay. A woman of God that never stopped praying. Never stopped praying. Never gave up. She knew that the Lord was going to bring me back and bring me through. Had a conversation with her. <laughs> Had a conversation with her. And um, when I told her, you know, um, the church I was joining, because being so depressed, I did have to stop going to church, and I was just distraught, mm -hmm. distraught. But she would encourage me, listen. She was like, okay, even if you don't want to go to the church where you grew up, 
wherever the Lord leads you, that's where you need to go. And, you know, be free to do that. And my mom, you know, gave me my, her blessing to do that. And, you know, church that I had always visited when I was young mm -hmm. and um, had worshipped. I became part of the church and joined the choir there. And when I did that, I was having a conversation with my mom and she said, the Lord gave you back to me. And that her prayer was that I would be singing and serving the Lord again. <laughs> and the Lord gave me that prayer. Amen. 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 So through prayer, yes. in this situation, I know you were crying to the Lord too, but mm -hmm. your mother was crying out to the Lord on your behalf. And through prayer, God hears the cries of yourself and your Absolutely. mother Amen. and brought you out. Mm -hmm. And now you are... <laughs> well, okay, not saying it's perfect, <laughs> but you're okay. You've learned from I, your past experience. And I have. I have. It doesn't mean I'm perfect at all. You know, I'm but, saying you have you know, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I know. I'm you kidding. know, I mean, none of us are. I know. I'm but, kidding. you know, God is faithful and he, 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 he uses us. And now, in our weakness, he's made, he's made strong and perfect. So, um, so through that moment, I know usually uh -huh. when we're going, for me personally, when I'm going through trials or or hardship, I usually have a verse that carries me through, <laughs> or a song that carries me through. Mm. Do you have a go-to scripture? I do. I do. Yes. I have. I actually have two. You have to share it. <laughs> <laughs> I have Romans eight and twenty-eight. And know that all things work together for them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And that I stood on because I said, okay, you know what? That means he loves me and what I'm going through, there's a purpose for it. Mm -hmm. And Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because in my strength, I can't do anything. Yeah. Nothing without him. Nothing. And I couldn't. I couldn't get myself out of the situation without it. But he, he got you through it. Oh, well, yeah. And he took care of that. So, one, I think all the questions are my favorite, but really, music, songs. <laughs> I'm excited to get through this part. Um, do you have a go-to song? I, I have several, but there's one that, no matter what, that's the first one that pops into my mind. And that's um, my tribute, Andre Crouch, which also is my mom's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oscar, so. My tribute? My tribute. So I'm going to put you on the spot, Kim. You're already on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind singing that? Oh, or part of it? Put it on. How can I say thanks for the things? You have done for me things so undeserved, yet you give to prove your love for me the voices of a million angels called the Yes, I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still standing. <laughs> so where are you right now spiritually and where are you after the trial? I'm grateful. I'm blessed. You know, still have, you know, your moments where you're down and in. But never hopeless. Never feel okay. despair because I know that God's got my back. He's my provider. He works all things together for my good. So regardless of what it is I see, I know his hand is in it. Mm -hmm. And he's not going to leave me. So, um, 
I don't worry about it. I don't worry about it. I don't worry about it anymore. Now I've accepted that he loves me. Yeah. Even with everything that I've done, how disobedient I've been, he loves me. Exactly. Crazy love. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Crazy love. Like we cannot so understand. What? Sometimes you yes. kind of think that maybe I'm getting it. And they're like, wait, how can he love me still? Like I say myself, like I put myself on the spot. I am extremely hard with the Lord. Like, Lord, you don't love me. Your what says that, but it's not happening. And then he come around sweetly and talk to me so sweetly. I'm like, wait, how can you still love me? It, it has to be crazy love. It has to be crazy love. Um, what are you expecting for the future with respect to your work with the Lord? I expect that I'll continue have, having trials mm -hmm. and tests, but the confidence and strength, knowing that He's working with me. My favorite poem is, is Footprints, when it says, you know, during the, the, the trying times, I only saw one yeah. set of footprints. It says, that's why I carried you. Yeah, I know that he's going to carry me through. There are certain things we would pre we prefer to avoid, but we have to go through it. Mm -hmm. And with what I've been through, as devastating as it was, I thank him that I went through it because my faith mm -hmm. would not be as strong as it is today. Mm -hmm. I would not be able so to stand and say so that he is my God. Mm -hmm. He's my God. Jesus is my Savior. So the Bible come out to be true. Yeah. You know, the trials are always oh, true. Oh, strength. Thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so I, I know earlier you touched on kind of kind of like your nursing, um, being a ministry. Mm -hmm. How do you do you see that being continued to use being do you see yourself being used mm -hmm. by the Lord um, in the future with that aspect or I believe so. I, I'm leaving myself open for the Lord to guide me. Okay. Where I am is that where I'm going to remain. Who knows? Yeah. But while I'm there, I will continue to shine my light. Um, in the life of my patients, my co-workers, you know, my superiors. And people don't understand what a smile, just being kind, Oh, Wait, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I have experienced that one, and it is amazing. Oh. She has the ability to just, like, I'm in the same choir as her, and I, uh, some other others of my friends who got in the choir together, every Sunday morning or doing rehearsal, she would see you, and you expecting just a, just a quick hug, like, okay, she just hug you, and you feel like you are at rest, and she hugs you, and she means it. Her hug is a ministry. I really sometimes needed her hug, and exactly. so she gave it to me. Sometimes I need it more than you guys. <laughs> <laughs> when she hugs, she really means it. I love it. So, what would you tell someone who is going through a the same situation that you were in? You are not alone. You may feel like you're alone, but Jesus is there with you. He's walking with you. He knows your tears. He's strengthening you. Continue to pray. Continue to trust in him. Reach out to fellow believers that know him and pray, have him pray with you. Pray on your own. Delve into your Bible, into God's Word, because it'll give you comfort. Mm -hmm. Read Psalms. David, listen, was not perfect, but the Lord used him, and he can use you mm -hmm. as well. Trust me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, in your own words, yes. right? Your own words. In my words. <laughs> yeah. What would you say a living epistle is? In my own words, I would say living a pistol for me is someone that tries to show who Christ is in their daily living and what you do in the conversations, your kindness towards others, your love, your patience, or just taking a moment out for someone that you wouldn't ordinarily do. That's what I think in, in the pistol, uh, living a pistol is, and that way you're showing 
God's love. Great. I love it. <laughs> so, we getting close to finishing. You, I want you to look back to from the beginning mm -hmm. and you observing your life and to now. What is the story you feel the Lord is telling the world with your life? That regardless of where you've been, what you've done, He can still use you once you accept Him and you give yourself and give you. You know, the psalmist says, I give myself away. You just stop trying to do things on your own strength. You let go and let him take control. And it doesn't make it perfect, but it makes it easier. And at least you know you have that backup. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy, oh. for sharing your life with people to encourage people. You said, you mentioned earlier, that you believe one of your ministry or gifts is to encourage. Surely your testimony is encouraging and your words are encouraging. Um, thank you for joining. Thank you. Living in Peace of Project. Thank you. And everyone, thank you for watching the Living in Peace of Project. I pray that you have been blessed through this project. And in the meanwhile, I challenge you to let God use you. God is real. And he's actually working in this life. He does not stop with the Bible. He does not stop. He's still calling people today to be his hands and to be his face. I challenge you to let God use you and be a living in peace of the Lord. God bless you. Oh